Greetings Divine Reflection! Welcome back to my channel. I love you so much. Thank you for being here. If you're new, my name is Idalis. I'm a healer, psychic intuitive, and bridger of consciousness. On this channel, I love to talk about esoterica, occult wisdom, and give you practical tools for the spiritual journey. Today's video is going to be, of course, about draconian star seeds. I'm so excited. I hope you are too. We're going to get into the Draco constellation as well as the draconian beings that come from this constellation, the reptiles, okay? As well as some draconian star seed traits to know if you yourself are a draconian star seed. All of this information has been researched and intuitively guided so i hope that you enjoy don't forget to like this video if you like it comment down below share and subscribe So the Draco constellation is actually the eighth largest constellation amongst our 88 recognized constellations in our heavens, in our sky, and sits in the northern hemisphere. Draco is also Latin for dragon, and we'll get into more of the associations that Draco has with the dragon later on. Inside of the Draco constellation, there famously sits the Cat's Eye Nebula, which is uniquely constructed with these blue-green concentric rings that form out of hydrogen and helium gas. There's also the Spindle Galaxy, or Messier 102, which contains up to 100 billion stars and can be signified by its large dust cloud, which kind of hangs over the galaxy. The brightest star within the Draco constellation is called Eltonin and sits at Draco's head and is actually Arabic for dragon's head. Draco is also notably mentioned within the 12 labors of Hercules, which are essentially a string of stories surrounding the god Hercules and how he became the god that he is renowned as today. In the 11th labor of Hercules, Hercules is actually tasked with stealing a golden apple from the golden apple tree that's guarded by a dragon named Hesperides. Okay, now let's talk about the draconian beings slash aliens that come from the constellation of Draco. It is said that these draconian beings have a reptilian quality to them. They have scales and the bodies and heads of reptiles. They may also have horns, wings, or tails, slitted eyes, and claws. At their highest form, they take on the form of a dragon. However, the lower class of draconian beings are a warrior caste and are kind of soldiers for the Draco mission. Similar to the Anunnaki, Draconians have the ability to shapeshift and can even shapeshift into human form. That is why there is so much conspiracy surrounding these kind of reptilian beings, especially within government. You may have even walked past one of these draconian reptilian shapeshifters on the street, just walking on the way to work. They could be anywhere. <clears throat> which is quite frightening considering that there is an evil force within the Draco constellation and amongst draconian beings. There is a deep-seated kind of desire amongst draconians to control and pillage and they seek to dominate over worlds and over systems um, and obviously within systems of power you could see how <laughs> the infiltration of such beings could be dangerous for humankind at large. So yeah, draconians are also master geneticists and there's one theory that suggests that draconians had a hand in the creation of dinosaurs 
on Earth as a result of DNA experimentation in the early days of this planet. Um, that being said, some draconian beings uh, are not only of this evil force, right? There are some draconian beings who do lean toward the light, however, are kind of cast out of draconian society and live on the outskirts, oftentimes retreating to other stars. Sirius and Orion are common places for draconian outcasts. Unfortunately, there is a large population of the draconian race that has had this desire for control and pillage for millions upon millions of years. It has said to have started in this galaxy with conflict between the Lyrans. If you want to learn more about the Lyrans, definitely check out the Lyran Starseed video. Draconians ventured into this realm due to lack of resources, and that is when they came upon the Lyra constellation and civilization. There is also a theory that states that human beings actually originated in the Lyran constellation and of the Lyran frequency. The Lyrans vibrate at the frequency of the 12th dimension source energy, the highest vibration that is, right? That's how we all have come down into physical form is by this force of light. Now, because Lyran civilizations were so abundant, so prosperous, it was a natural place for draconians to want to take these resources that they needed for their own. Upon the meeting of draconians and Lyrans, there was tension, and due to Lyrans being such a peaceful planet and never before having seen war, they were defenseless and open to attack from draconian beings. Sadly, in the process of the draco lyran war, draconians ended up killing millions of Lyrans and destroying entire planets, leaving the Lyrans to have to create new homes on other star systems, including Sirius and Orion, which is very sad, and if you do resonate with the frequency of Lyran beings or are, you know, a draconian being that leans more toward light, which hopefully most of you are, <laughs> then um, I'm sure you can feel the, the pain of this experience. Also, I want to mention that, you know, this war between the draconians and the Lyrans still goes on today and is sort of a representation of the fight between darkness, which isn't inherently evil, but um, can be seen as ignorance, right? Or just lack of light. So darkness as ignorance and light as, as the truth being completely seen and known and felt and understood. So now let's get into the draconian star seed traits. These are ways to know if you are a draconian starseed yourself. There are actually 11 that I have for you today, so let's get into it. So the first way you could tell if you are a draconian starseed is if you have a muscular build, right? You are very physically strong. Or on the flip side, you could also have a thin and slender body and perhaps a long slender face as well. Either way, your presence is quite intimidating to others. You may also be drawn to physical acts, right? Such as working out or competitive sports. That was number two. Number three is that you may come across as aggressive and perhaps even cold-hearted. Um, this is due to the intensity of your emotions, especially in regard to humanity, which can sometimes come in the form of defiance or anger. Number four is if you are very connected to your intuition. You have a very strong intuition. You can sense things quite easily. Perhaps you can pick up on energies and are sensitive in that way, but you also know things perhaps before they happen. You can 
predict the future in a sense or you just have a deep knowing of what is the right thing to do the right way to go and how to best navigate situations this strong intuition can also result in the ability to telepathically communicate with others right that's how sharp your mind is. Number five is if you have a high level of intelligence and are aware of it, right? You are someone who can easily influence others and rally others based on your ideas ideas, right? People believe in what you have to say because your mind is so bright and you may even be a leader in your career field. Number six is that although you have a strong sense of self, you also may lack a sense of individuality. You may also fall in line with other people. You may be subject to giving up control to a higher force or power that you feel that you may deem as higher or more powerful than you. That's something that I felt intuitively among draconian starseeds, right? You might fall into that kind of warrior mentality, although others may feel the opposite. Starseed trait number seven is that you may easily blend in with others, right? You know kind of how to mold to fit certain situations so that you fit in. However, you may also be someone who wants to do things different, who wants to reshape and rethink things and think outside of the box, right? And in that way, you might stand out from others from fitting in. The next way you can tell if you are a draconian starseed is if you lean toward the darkness. Um, it is no surprise that draconian starseeds would lean more toward that which goes against good and <clears throat> lean more toward evil, chaos, war, destruction, those sorts of things. The draconian starseed may lack a sense of morality and may swing quite easily between light and dark and good and bad. For these starseeds, a balance of the light is necessary to become a balanced human being. However, the next way you could tell if you are a draconian starseed is if you lean toward the light and believe that you've come here to bring peace and restore balance to humanity. That is also a draconian starseed mission, right? To move away from this chaos and evil and destruction and balance these forces. These starseeds tend to be community builders and mediators and are very public spirited. The tenth way to tell if you are a draconian starseed is if you are attracted to lizards and reptiles. And the last way you could tell if you are a draconian starseed is if you feel so deeply protective over the ones that you love, you are loyal to the day you die for the ones that you love. That is how you know that you are a draconian starseed. Draconian starseeds are incredibly intense individuals and love just as deeply. Okay, that is all for the Draconian Starseed video. I hope that you enjoyed and that you've connected um, to a frequency that you have once embodied, or if not, learned a little more about the Draconian Starseed frequency and what draconians and reptiles are. Like this video if you like it. Don't forget to comment down below. Let me know what you think of the video. Share this video with anyone who you think might need it and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. I make videos every single week, so you'll definitely want to stay tuned. Right? <laughs> Love you. And I will see you next week for a brand new video. I hope you enjoyed. Bye!